he, he told a story about taking his pops to the strip club and like his pops would be like, Chan, how she look? Right, so I thought that would be, I thought that would be like a funny story because his pops can't see, yeah. but he in the strip club. Blind there, daddy, hey, the and he woman. said like one time he gave his pops all his money, like some singles, and the stripper took it from him. <laughs> he didn't even know he was, he was brushing his hips and all the money was gone. Hold up, limitless, take a semi cap pin in it. I thought they hear the witnesses. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, when I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Think it's still me kind of in it. I thought they hear the witnesses. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, when I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, we in Vegas. We decided we we're going to come out here and do a couple of shows. We had some people lined up. But with the way everything is right now, man, we had people test positive for COVID. Couldn't even have the guests we thought or, you know, shoot, the cast that we thought. It's just getting crazy because I take it extremely serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was finna cancel Christmas for my whole family because right. my old lady coughed twice, you know? And I told, nah, straight up, I told her. I was like, you get tested. Oh, you ain't going to see my parents on Christmas Eve, right? And your people can't come here on Saturday. This would be a very merry Baton Rouge Clark Christmas. And I get it, like, I be tripping. Do y'all, like, how y'all see it though? Cause like, it, it messed up, it messed up everything we came out here to do. It changed the world. It changed the world, really. COVID changed the world, how everything does, everything goes down, we down in the casino, we hanging out. Right. And it changed everything, but how, like, how do you navigate it? For me, you just gotta live. Cause it's, the experts don't know what's going on. They tell you quarantine for, for 14 days, then it's 10 15, days, it's five. now it's five days. They say it's six feet. Then I saw a special where they say it's more like nine or 12 feet. You know, they really don't know. They're saying you get it once, will you be immune? You got antibodies, you got this, you got that. I know 10 year olds, mm -hmm. right? That's had it twice in a span of four months and he's vaccinated. So it's just curious, nobody knows what do you yeah. call it? Yeah. The, the new STD or? Yeah, or, or that's what shit? it is. It's the new STD. Like, you know, like when STD started popping up, everybody's trying to figure out how do we get rid of these, rid of these illnesses. I mean, you dang there, bro. You meet a chick. It ain't even like, hey, uh, we gonna strap up. You on the pill. It's like, when last time you got a COVID test? And are you willing to take one before I tongue kiss you? Or are we gonna have to just do it in a way while our faces ain't close? But you, you would it be you? the at-home test or the rapid PCR? The See, cause what, at home, the, the, the Walgreens to put in the little box test. I don't that's the, that's the at home. Yeah, I don't yeah trust but they it. say you shouldn't take that one unless you got symptoms. But the other so part if, is, though, if you're trying to get down, how you, how the you thing know is, too, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that would be a mood killer, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, y'all, hey, you about to, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all about to get down. Hold, oh wait, wait, boo, boo, boo. You look good. But can I swab your nose real quick? <laughs> hit, hit this by next. <laughs> hit this, yeah, hit hit this. this by next real the way, fast. Because the way I am, I'd probably rather get the STD than COVID. Huh? What? You'd rather get STD than COVID. <laughs> Ain't nobody never died from chlamydia. Oh, Jesus Christ. You can shave all your hair off, get rid of crabs. Have you ever had crabs? Yeah, no, no, that's what I was going to say, because I've had COVID. Okay. Like, one thing, I had COVID and I'm vaccinated. So that's why I'm kind of, I'm a little more looser to be honest, because I'm like, I did everything I could. My body has the antibodies and right. I let them create the antibodies, to be honest. That, and that's that's my opinion. I know this has been politicized a lot about, you know, what's going on and there's yeah. two sides of this, but with what I've been through, my whole family caught at the same time, three kids, me and my wife, five of us caught at the same time. What's your youngest? A year and a half ago. My son, my, my youngest was four months, five months. Positive too? And didn't have a symptom. My daughter, eight, didn't have a symptom. Me and my son lost our taste. But my wife, Asia, she was in the hospital for two days with back pains, with, you know, uh, what, walking pneumonia and all that that, yeah. that, that that they talk about. But see, though, like, if I get it, like, you know, I have no spleen, right? And we were, you say I'm sickly, but I'm not sickly. Like, I hardly ever get sick. You don't have a spleen. I don't have a spleen or a gallbladder or, like, a piece of my liver. You ain't got no organs. They say you don't need them joints. <laughs> but that's what they told me when they took them out. <laughs> Right. He, on he got nano organs. Hollow, hollow man. But no, for real, stop laughing at me, man. That's that's like serious, dog. I could have died. I was like, I lost like, like 45 pounds, man. He you did. You freaking mean, dog. I'm not mean. I don't, I don't have one kidney. I was born really? with one kidney. Yeah. Born I mean, you one over, kidney. See, look, you overcome. You yeah, my, my, man. my dad was. He, he was overachieving. He was in Miami in the 70s. So, so he, he was, was living. Yeah, he was living. He was living. Yeah, yeah a lot of stuff in this. So he definitely done had the claps, the crabs. I don't know what my yeah. daddy had. You can't had. put that on that man, daddy? They ain't even had no rubbers back Listen, then. Listen, Randy, a suave mother.
<laughs> Randy Whoa. was back there doing his thing back there in Miami. I get it now. That's where Rudolph comes from. Randolph. <laughs> Randolph. 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 He looked like Randolph. a Randolph. Look at his shirt. He all he came tucked up. You all tight button. Who coming? Who coming? Debo. I really like this shirt, dog. Like it, it's it, like it Debo. Fits you. First, first Friday, riding the bike. Um, squeak, squeak. Fred, squeak, put squeak. your shoes on top of the thing. No, why you gonna? Why you? Why you? Why you? Why you we, Man, we, 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 nice we gonna? Dog. We gonna do it? We yeah, gonna do a nice shoe dog. thing? Or y'all gonna throw y'all shoes up? Put your shoe up, Shannon. Sit back. Y'all yeah. got the bottom with it too, huh? It's clean yeah. bottoms. Yeah, because we don't just wear them all the time. What's up, Shannon? What's up, Shannon? That's called a black harachi. <laughs> okay, Shannon. First off, uh -huh. how old are they? They about seven months, six, seven months. All right, they about seven months. It's still clean, though. Why do they not clean? They're wrinkled. They're not, they clean. And they messed up. Why the little top finna come off, though? Like, because I drag my toe when I ride a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Where you ride a scooter to? I got kids, baby. You don't got automatic kick scooter. <laughs> hey, okay, I, so, so you chose to wear them shoes, but I put them on. But yeah, I, I decided, right? We we, we have filmed though, mm -hmm. with you and some J's. Yeah, you had the 14s, <laughs> the brown joints. Those was hard. Yeah. Are we gonna see those? Run? Are you gonna run those back? Ain't nobody seeing those again. Why not? Whoa, whoa. Wait. So, so <laughs> you just gonna wear them one time, put them up, maybe resell them? No, I don't even got them no more. I what took them back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, I wore them one time. We had it or earlier show. I wore them one time, and then I, I went and took them back. Took Come them, on, took them back for those to the store. I'm not wearing them no more. Randall, I'm gonna give them to somebody. I'm blessing somebody else with those beautiful. Oh, wait, talking about so you brought them somewhere where somebody can get them for cheaper or for free. No, I took them back to the store I got them from. They were like $2.30 or something. So, so you get your money back? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. really, you ain't blessing nobody. You're giving the store opportunity to just make their money back. To resell it. They put it in a little plastic shrink wrap. Look brand new. I ain't even leave, I ain't even leave in them. I don't even walk in shoes like that. $230 pair of shoes, I don't even go outside in them. But you've been in the comments. That was you or Asia? Because mm -hmm. I, I got a message for Asia. When you put those up, mm -hmm. we got to work on the sock game. You got on these long jeans. What, what you want me to wear, a crew sock? Nah, wear something sexy, baby. Like, you know, my sock's purple right now. I don't really care what color. You know, look, I'm going to pull them up real quick. You see? Oh, so I need, to wear, they, I need to wear church socks. They not church socks. That, that's a church sock, friend. Ain't no such no, thing these as are church, church socks. socks. These are church socks. That's a church socks. That's oh, solid black. That, that's, 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 that'll, that's, work, that, that'll work for you. That's an actual church sock. But you can wear re anything. Reverend. I'm, we can call him Reverend. The Deacon R.C. is fine for but me. I'm not even I have <laughs> actually preached a sermon on Men's Day <laughs> at the regular Baptist church in Gretna, Louisiana. <laughs> it, it's, and you so, don't have to be a fashionista or fashionisto. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you got on no shows with Levi's, baby. So no skin ain't sexy? I got pretty calves. I know. Asia know better. Asia do Asia get on me. My wife get on me. You know, the, the, she's a stylish one, so she get on me all the time. But you don't trust her. What's the problem? I do trust her, but I don't like to shop. She like to shop. When we shop, I act funny. She gets mad. Right. Like yeah, I, all that going and trying to put. I don't even want to try stuff. Do on you me. have a you have well, a lot of a lot of interesting uh, dynamics in relationships in your life, right? Oh like, yeah. Like you, you spoke about, you want less men to want your wife, so men mm -hmm. that. Ain't worried about women or people oh, that I you love, like. Boy, I love me right? a good homosexual man. I do. Don't say it like that, Channing. I do. They, that, that, you, have it. you have to explain that and say that That's a different way, saying. Channing. Some of my tightest buddies okay. are homosexual men because the fact that they, they're pleasant dudes, they're fashionable, smart, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they that, and they're not trying to hit my wife. They're trying to hit me, and I can hold out. Right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna hit me. But I'm trying to get to a different point. Okay. That was way off the subject. Man, right? you, this dude, your yeah. mouth's so loose, It's bro. so loose. But you were telling me a little bit <laughs> earlier, dog, I just found it interesting. Like, mm -hmm. you were talking about your pops. Like, y'all all met Jordan. Yeah. And the kind of relationship we had. And then you were telling me about your pops and the fact that your pops played ball, too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Actually played for the Dolphins. We're the too. first father and son to ever get drafted to the same team in NFL history. The first. The first. Bro, my, that's crazy. My, my pops got drafted in 1974 in the sixth round to the Dolphins. I got drafted in 05 in the third round to the Dolphins. Wow. The okay. Matthew boys played for the Patriots with his uncle and his dad. Like, yep. There's other people that played for the same team, but me and my father, the first father and son to ever get drafted to the same Did team. Did they publicize that a lot when you came out? They did. I, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. Yeah, they 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 amped it up in Miami, but they mm. didn't really. It wasn't a it wasn't like a big time story because to be honest, you know, my dad wasn't the all pro guy and right. I wasn't the all pro guy, so it, it didn't get as big as like the Clay Matthews and his right. pops and uncle and all that. Yeah, stuff. like like that stuff happens down the line after people play for a long time. Yeah, and then they figure out 
But I know you was telling me that like y'all didn't talk for a while though. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an interesting dynamic to me because now you're saying that you guys are so close and, and I love that because it's almost like, all right, man, like what happened or whatever it was, was, and now we can have this grown up relationship. That's the one thing I see. And it's, it's great with you and Jordan. It's great with you and your son, meeting you, your son, talking with them, talking with y'all and seeing y'all dynamic of being so young and being that close the whole life. But my, my pops and, and, and my mom, Pauline, they got divorced when I was almost 10 and we moved away. And that's one thing, just a teaching experience for you know people out there is that the, the grownups are the ones that have to be the people that make that right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's 100%. who it is, the, the right. grown, the grown folks. And I know y'all have, you know, different, you know, kids with other women. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what y'all been through with it, but when my mom and dad broke up, it was so divisive between them that the kids felt that. Mm -hmm. Me and my me and my two sisters felt that. Mm -hmm. And so with my mom and dad being, you know, being at, at odds, then it kind of be it kind of created some at odds with me and my pops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it stopped all through college. I ain't talked to my pops. I'm at Florida. He lived in Tampa. He was two hours away. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing at Florida. I'm all SEC, all American. I'm balling out. You know, people, I'm sure people talk. He told me now that we're tight. People talking to him about, hey, your son, your son, your son is this, right. your son's dad. I love your son. And we, we didn't have a relationship. And sitting there and being a part of that now as a grown man, seeing it and coming back to it and seeing that that was the wrong thing. But the divisiveness between my mom and dad hurt me and my dad's relationship. And I, I, I think ultimately it hurt me and my mom's relationship as well. Mm -hmm. So the, any parents out there that are in that position, like right. you don't understand what that does to you the kids. You gotta let go. Yeah. You gotta let that go. Like right. you gotta worry about the, the children, worry about what they need. I needed a father. I needed a male right. figure. I needed a guy that my dad was a three-time All-American at right. Penn State. I'm All-American. Like we had a lot in common. And, and, but, but to be able to have, like for me, that's not where everything ends up. It's about the relationships that develops through your experience together. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's the like it's the time I wanted to jump in the back seat and fight Jordan one day because he said something stupid to me. And next the next minute we were talking about the football game. Yeah. It's being there at the state championship, and you know he he gets beat on the play, and he looks up to me, he gets to the sideline, and I could be like, hey, look, you need to slide outside, you need to do that. And I think just those small moments are things that parents in those situations don't understand. And you know you mentioned the fact that I had a child with somebody else, it was different because I was the parent in the house with the child. Where like a lot of times it ends up, it ends up being the mom, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and it's different to have to sit down and have conversations with her about the fact that she is worthy, about the fact that she does matter. And two, to have her long for and yearn for somebody who's not around. You know what I'm saying? When you got, when I'm married to somebody that's taking care of you, that loves you, I've loved you since since the day they told me they were going to have you and they said well maybe y'all are too young and we should put up put you up for adoption and so like i had to to deal with that situation and it is difficult for me it was different though because i didn't have like no emotion for her mom like that you know what i'm saying like my heart wasn't broken was any of those things it's like i just want my baby i would think nothing would hurt me more than not being at graduations yeah. that for my daughter now who does live away with her mom which is crazy which is crazy which is hard for me Mm -hmm. I knew before she was leaving that she was leaving, but she walks in the back. I'm on the Peloton and she's like, dad, I think it'd be best. You know, I think it's more opportunity in San Francisco, this and that. And hell yeah, it hurt because here I am at home trying to get you a job now at home, trying to let you do all these other things. But there are some things that like we can't fix and no, but to have her leave, bro. And, you know, and she'll text me and I'll be like, babe, how you doing? Like, how are things? How's your job? And she'd be like, you know, everything's good, pop. I just miss my best friend. Yeah. You know, she's like, I ain't never been this far away from you. Like, I've always been with you. She's like, it's just weird. It's just hard. And so when it happens at that age, I could deal with it. But I couldn't imagine it being, you know, where you guys well, well, were. You feel like you did your job, right? But, yeah. But, that's no, all but, that matters. But, but Fred, it's funny, it's funny that, to this that's... Fred, it's funny this dynamic because single mother's a phrase. We've heard a whole life. Everybody, everybody heard their whole life. Single mother, single mother. What about the single father or the isolated father? Yeah. When you do, when they live with their mom, but you're the one on the outskirts, and that's the thing too. As a as, as the show that we, you know, what I'm saying we doing the pivot, like we doing this, to so speak on. It, and a couple of people came up to me and talked about it. Like y'all need to talk about this. Y'all need to talk about the 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 fathers on the opposite side of 
the single mother, and there's some deadbeat ass dads out there. Straight 100%. up. And, and, they I need to be my, called, and they need to be that. I thought my father yeah, was a deadbeat dad. Like that. Yeah. But I found out later he wasn't a deadbeat dad. Yeah. But I couldn't do that at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old to figure yeah. out he he wants that, to be involved. But but there's also there's also not people that get drafted to the same team your draft your dad was drafted to to have alumni day and your pops is there. So you I want to I want to go back to there too. Yeah. You guys' relationships, you know what what was the pivot? What was the change in your relationship? I tell you, Nat Moore, great slot receiver in Miami, dog. He's now he's some some big. They made a name up for him. Nat Moore is a great dude. He's like an uncle to me. Knew him as a kid, and even when I got to the Dolphins. And they have an alumni day in camp when all the old dudes come out and y'all have a barbecue after practice. Yeah. And Nat came up to me because Nat knew my father and knew me. Mm-hmm. So he came up to me. He was like, I know you and your dad aren't on speaking terms, but your, I want to invite your father to alumni day. You guys not being on speaking terms, was it you? It, it was me. Why? Did you feel that he did I, something to your mother? Or? But you gotta, like, it, it, it just you, wasn't you live there. with like, your mom. Like, no, nah, I want to know. Here. What was yeah, it? You, you, I, I live with my mom. She was a supporter she was the she, she fed me put a roof over my head right. she clothed me she was my everything she was getting a check she was getting that government check she was getting that child support but she pushed this separation between me and my pops that i couldn't mend as a 15 16 year old kid. but did, it, did did you feel like at that time the man of the house though or no like did you feel oh. like you had like because you know like sometimes cats start to think like young men I have to protect my mom now. I have to, to to be on her side, you know. And so you hearing these things, and you like, is is it almost a betrayal that she feels this way about this certain person, and I'm now longing for that person, and I'm now trying to talk to him or be with him. I need to show her that I'm rocking with her and nobody else. Yeah, you got to pick teams. Like it's two sides to it. You got to pick yeah. a team, and I'm, I'm I pick the team of the person I see every day, the person that wakes me up for school, the person that drives me to school, the person that feeds me, the person that takes me to football practice, baseball practice, basketball practice, track. I sided on those terms with her. And now as a grown man, I saw what I did. And that's, I think, half of my grind to make where, to make it where we all made it. I didn't feel like I was a man of the house. Okay. And that, that phrase that you just said yeah, kind of so clicked to me. Yeah. I didn't feel like I had to protect the house or protect my sisters. I have two older sisters. Right. Protect Dacia and Alana. I felt as if I need to make something of myself. Okay. If it's football, I went to Florida going in animal science, I was going to be a veterinarian. Like, I never wanted to be a, a you know, a, like a lower end job. I wanted to. You wanted to excel. I yeah. always wanted to excel to be the man that I think that could take my family to a different place. Yeah. So I didn't feel as if I needed to be that man of the house, mm-hmm. as you say. But I felt as if I need to make it. I'm so talented. So I'm so you, smart. Did, I'm did, so physically talented that I can take this this somewhere. Was there ever a time when you came back and looked at your mom and said, hey, you was wrong. He's not what you told me he was. And we've had that conversation about growing up. We've had a conversation about a number of things, not just with my dad, but just with life and, and the, the ideologies of what a single mother goes through and how she's, you know, she's everything. So she puts everything on her kids, what she believes. And that's what I went through is where I had so so much in my mind about what, and as a grown man, you see it, and a lot of kids out there will see it as they grow up. But they put parents out there, period, about everything else, but everybody, you know, everything, not just divorce and all this, what we're talking about, but everything that people talk about, you are your kid's teacher of yeah. life. They have a first grade, second grade, third grade teacher. Yeah. The life teaching is what parents put on But them. see, that's the thing in our community, though. I mean, I can't speak for other community or cultures because I don't know, but in my upbringing, my mother had me when she was 15, right? And it's a similar situation as you, but she never talked bad about my dad. My mom, she was young and she was afraid, but what she wanted to do was protect myself and protect my my brothers and sisters, you know, along the way. So she didn't necessarily bash my dad, but you know, it was more along the lines of, uh, I'm here for you. Regardless of what he does, I'm going to be here for you. My dad and I, we developed a relationship when I was a sophomore in high school. Mm. And at that particular time, you know, some people can look at it that he came around when, you know, I was starting to become Fred Taylor. When I was starting to become Fred Taylor, right? Or he felt in himself that, look, your mom, 
she was young and she was afraid, you know, whatever went on, she wasn't 100% honest with you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back and make this right. Mm -hmm. So the latter part of that is the truth. He came back into the picture from military and he said, all those years that I've missed, I wanna make up for that. I'm gonna make this right. And from my sophomore year in high school, I never questioned anything. After I retired from the NFL. You also, too, have to remember he's not retired. Fred's old. Man, I'm not old. Fred, you throw you old, old shit man. away. I am seasoned, baby. Freddie, do you buy them pills from the gas station to get your meat right? Here we go. That no. big horse pill. The blue one that be at the gas station? They come in ones, and you got to pop it out the back. So my do they, side Freddy, get, do, Freddy, so, do they, so, do they so work? Do aside they work? from that, you can subscribe to freakyfreddy.com <laughs> or, or, or my close friends, right? Uh -huh. For $9.99, mm -hmm. we can have these conversations. What a, we'll have those discussions. I want to talk about freak, he nasty. you, yeah, Mo, I am. A goat. I heard about a goat in the bedroom. Or I see a goat just looking at him. What do you need that for? He want to perform in front of somebody else. You performer? He show out. Fred, Fred gave me a little rose, <laughs> some little vibrating rose hey, one time. You see how I'm looking at I'm him, I'm going to say it. Fred gave me a little rose one. It's like a vibrating rose one time. I see that in the shade room or something he, like that. See how he covered it? He was like, bro, try this. And he gave me a little rose that vibrates, and it got like a little, you could put a little juice in the middle. <laughs> bro, it, I didn't know what to do with it. You put, uh, I you put, put the juice in I put it? I put it on the kitchen table. <laughs> I put a candle in the top. <laughs> you know what to do? Hey, <laughs> hey people, people hey. come home like, hold on, Channel. You know what that is, right? Nah, that's a candle holder, I thought. <laughs> that's a whole other topic, bro. Yeah. Stop it, bro. Brady, one thing I want to say, because you asked me earlier about my mom's side. I right. say this, and it's something that me and my dad talked about. When I'm a grown-ass man, he's a grown-ass man. And men out there, my dad said, I should have pushed harder. That's real. Against your mom. Yep. I should have pushed harder right. to have a relationship yeah. with you. I should have pushed, I put, should have pushed harder for you. That and, and, yeah, that's and real. that that so you say me and my mom, we've had me and my mom have had a bunch of conversations about it and we we've come to that. But my dad, he he's he's admitted, he was like, when she started pushing back, I didn't push back hard enough. Yeah. So she pushed me all the way in the corner and I stayed in the corner. Mm -hmm. And any mm -hmm. man out there that has a child with a woman that you're not with, fight for your kid. Fight for your kid. But there's and only a small percentage of guys that do it. More people should do it, Fred. Right. We take a little longer to mature than women. Mm -hmm. Women are ready right now. Men aren't. You know, so I can understand where he came from. Plus, he was in Miami slanging, like you said, mm -hmm. right? And Randy, so, well, Randy got a slug. Oh, shit. So, Here we go. But you, said, you said you take your pops to uh, strip clubs. Tootsie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you took him to Tootsie. But, I took him to Tootsie. But, but you said your pops, he can't see what's going my, on. My, he blind. Right. But he can touch. Okay, so it's like Ray Charles, like he can feel grab, the wrist. Grab, grab the wrist he grab and he know wrist. what right, it is. Right, right, right. Oh you know God. when they say one sense leaves, the other ones get stronger? Yeah, his touch nice, nice. Boy, Big Randy, Big Randy get right. And I ain't gonna lie, first time I saw Big Randy come out the shower, I was like, <laughs> See, I got my, I got my mama's <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I am weak, dog. I am hey, too. I am like weak. once I saw my daddy, I'm like, hey, damn, maybe why like, didn't I get that? Like my daddy, big chill, dude. Bro. I'm a big dude. My daddy, but, thick, but, playing the league. I'm thinking that. But I'm like, why did I? Why did God give me my mama's? <laughs> I wish I had my daddy. <laughs> hey, it was hey, maybe not. Maybe maybe penis come from the mama side of the family. Like if your mama, daddy tall. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be tall. You'll be tall. So maybe your mama daddy was tall. My but mama daddy wasn't tall. My daddy was tall. So you got your daddy height, but your mama meat. My mama meat. Dang, dog. That's and I'm tough. like, damn, why did I get that <laughs> side of the meat? And so I ain't hurt. Hurting. I ain't hurting now. See, now I can <laughs> right. I got three babies now. I can I can throw it down if I need to throw it down. I mean, all, but all, if all somebody to do is work. When when my wife says go deeper, I tell her I don't got no nothing left. <laughs> 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 I say, we had a hell. Like <laughs> Hell to hell. Hell to hell. Hell to hell. See, I'm shaking. <laughs> hey, we had a hell. Dang, hey, dang, glutes tight as hell and everything, dog. You didn't get it. Damn, hip flexors. Yeah, oh, everything. Got whole spinal cord Booty tight. Like, trying to, trying to, I, yeah, I don't know. They say you, they say you, you measure, measure your meat. I measure way back from the middle and come up with the ruler. Where are you supposed to measure your meat from? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, there's no way they allow us to keep making shows. Um, we'll never do a show without a guest because we need, we need guidance. 
We need somebody to ask questions to. We need to know <laughs> where the hell the topic is going. Listen, yeah. I, I just like I when, when we start these things, I'm like, all right, I got a pretty good thought process of how this this conversation could go. That does not work with y'all. Listen, man. you know what we, we do? We're gonna talk hey, about friend, COVID, friend. chlamydia, crabs. Yeah, we talked about crabs. You you oh you didn't finish you, you were trying to get there but we, but no this is this is this is knowledge for people out there, <laughs> the crab community. <laughs> I don't yeah. think do people still get them. I don't game. know. I didn't think they got them in those six. I was at Florida. I was running. This is before I met my wife and all. You know, I was running. Yeah, so she she understands. She didn't heard the story before. Wow. So I'm out there running. I got me some little dibbles and dabbles. I go to practice. I'm at practice, we warming up, and I don't know if anybody know. I found out later that moisture excites the crabs because they want to lunker down in your in your hair. I didn't know at the time what was going on, and I didn't know who gave them to me. But I go to practice. We practice and we go through warm ups. <laughs> I feel some itching, and I'm like, okay, well, this is not normal. And so then we really get into practice, and I'm I'm just it's. I'm shaking and I can't even go in. And I told Coach Charlie Strong, I'm like, Chuck, I can't go in. Charlie Strong was my defense coordinator in Florida. He's like, I said, Chuck, no, I can't, I'm, I can't run today. He was like, well, get in the game. I was like, no, Coach, I can't go. So then they go deep one day again. And I'm all SEC All American at this time. Like, they're like, we got to get ready for this game. I'm like, no, nah, Coach, I'm not going in the game. Like, why? I don't want to sweat no more. It's like, why? So now Ron Zook, he comes out, Crowder, where, where are you at? I said, Coach, I can't, it's itching. <laughs> hey, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean it's itching? I said, yeah, my man's itching. My, 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 my man parts is itching. He's like, well, what happened? I said, I don't know, coach, but my man parts is itching. <laughs> so he, he was like, just go inside. Just, just get out of here. So he excused me from practice. Run inside. The moisture again excites the crabs. They lunk it down because they want to lay eggs in your follicles. I did research. So I go, and I'm I trying to take a shower, it. and as I start taking a shower, I start itching more because the crabs are now lunkering down and putting their little crab claws into me. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, this hurts. <laughs> I end up going to the trainer. The trainer's like, this no, isn't didn't. normal. Yeah. This isn't lice. I thought I can get a little brush and brush them out. They were like, no, these, the little eggs are small. You got to suffocate them. So I had to go home. I had to take a, a bucket of peanut butter. And you got to rub peanut butter all over your man pieces and all around on the hair. <laughs> peanut the butter, stop. Bro. Peanut bro. Peter Pan. No, no, this was this, this was Publix brand. I had no money back then. Okay. I, I would, I, and it was smooth, so you can't use crunchy, because it's holes in crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> so I used the creamy, right? And I had to sit there hey, with the right, creamy right? on me. You are terrible. So bro. I got, a, I got, I got Publix brand creamy. Peanut butter. And they got it ready. Had of to them? put it on. Yeah, set it there. And then slowly the itches started stopping because the crab couldn't breathe. What's the message in that? I just taught people how to get rid of crabs. <laughs> I just taught people that moisture excites them because they lunk it down. I taught them that crabs lay eggs in your follicles. Fred, you're not listening. That's your problem. You don't so, listen. So, so basically what happened is we got a chance to do a podcast together without mm -hmm. a guest. And it started at COVID, which is a very serious yeah. situation. It then moved to STDs, mm -hmm. which can be a very serious situation. We just didn't speak about it that way. We got to parenting, very serious topic, and we finished on crabs. So like I said, I really enjoyed our last podcast <laughs> together without a guest. I don't eat seafood. Because you had the crabs. Crabs scared me now. Show's over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I hate y'all, bro. <laughs> I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Niggas send me cap in it. I thought they here to witness it.